and not bind God by those same limitations, then our understanding and our relationship to God can grow and be greater. So the idea that we constrain God to time, though, I mean, how does that look? I, I know that we use a lot of time words, and you point out in your book, it's something I never thought of before, but the, the, that you cannot speak, you cannot speak. It, it, our language is all about time, because once we put a verb in there, it's an action, which is yes. all about time, like something is happening now, now it's not. And so we don't even know how to speak in ways that transcend time. But the idea that God is in t uh, t the time, constricted by time, what, what does that mean to people? I mean, what does that matter? Well, you get bound by the idea that God has to do things in sequence. Mm -hmm. um, you've got a sick friend who's going in for an operation, so you pray for them. Well, unbeknownst to you, God can answer your prayer by having a child conceived in 1960 who grows up to be a brilliant doctor. Mm -hmm. We've got this disconnect. You say, well, how can I pray for something to have happened before I ever heard of it? Hey, man, God's smarter than you. Okay. He can yeah. do stuff that you can't and that I can't. And that is something that humans need to realize. The ability to grasp all time at once is unique to God. No human has that ability. And it frees him from boundaries that we have to live with. And in asking people to recognize this, I'm asking them to not get out of their own boundaries because we can't, we're humans, but appreciate that God isn't limited in the same way that we are. Yeah, I've always and, kind of thought, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I, just, I've always, I've, I've, I have recently been thinking that I can pray for something happening in the past. Okay, so like that's a, that would be another place that it's not limited. Like I can, like I've, I've been playing with this. Like I don't, I don't know what's happening, but like I, I can pray for, you know, my, my grandmother's mother or something like that. And I'm thinking, absolutely, yes. yeah, that, that even though in my linear world, she's gone, been long gone, and I never even knew her, there are stories about her in, in my family, you know, mythology, I guess, the, mm -hmm. the stories that I, I know she was in situations that perhaps she could use a little love or a little care. And so I've been, I've been playing around with praying for people or animals in, that have long passed. And mm -hmm. even my own self, okay, so I've been playing with this too, even my own self, my own little child, like when I'm three or four or five or eight, you know, thinking about times where maybe I was really sad or something really bad happened and, and going and, 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 and sending my prayers to her. And because I think that there's times where we're just gonna walk around and every once in a while we just feel something good we feel support we feel some wind at our back and maybe that is somebody in the quote future praying for us that is entirely possible and it's very difficult for the human mind to get a grip on it because of our sequential thinking about time if you say i pray that my grandfather will survive world war ii well it sounds strange today and maybe it's a prayer of thanksgiving that your grandfather did survive World War II, mm -hmm. but God can sort that out, okay? Mm -hmm. He didn't have any difficulties handling things in different times. He's present to all time. Uh, these are so many different things that, that boggle the, the mind of a human that God just handles perfectly well. Now, notice that I haven't told you how God sees time. And the reason is that I don't know because I'm limited by the same human uh, co constraints that everyone else is. But I ask people to give God the freedom to not be bound by human constraints. And then all sorts of wonderful things can happen. 